Uh, I was born into the environmental movement. From this picture, we look pretty average, but it's a disguise, trust me. Um, <laughs> behind it is the fact that my parents were the co-founders of Greenpeace. Now, my parents and original eco-warriors like them, uh, part of Greenpeace, won uh, numerous victories in those days to save whales, stop nuclear testing, and push towards a mainstream environmental movement to protect our planet. So when I decided that uh, it was my time to become an activist at 19 years old, I joined Sea Shepherd. This is one of the more radical and controversial groups out there. Uh, I wanted to kind of one-up my parents, I guess. Um, <laughs> but that's me with the Captain Paul Watson. He's the man that is running uh, away from Interpol and is hiding from world governments right now. So I like to call him Uncle Paul. <laughs> but the reality is we are entering a new normal of a climate destabilization. So let's be clear. Environmental activism is, isn't about saving the world for future gen generations anymore. It's not about some good deed. We can pat ourselves on the back. We're being green heroes. But what it is about is actually protecting the survival of our own generation. That may sound really drastic, but the reality is we're going to be living through the ecological tipping point, not any other generations. What we need to move forward towards now is more of a systemic change that this issue really requires. So this is the next stage. If our generation is to have any meaningful impact on our world and our future, it is towards more systemic change. What is next? Where are we going and, and where are we now even? It is time to evolve activism again, but with our own generation. We are the largest generation to have ever existed. With 3.5 billion people on the Earth's population is under the age of 30 or younger. The UN calls this uh, us the new global power reshaping the world. And if we choose to, we can reshape the world for the better, not necessarily the worse. The system that we really need to begin to address is the economic system. Now, some might find my speech a little bit of a stretch here, linking the environment and the economy, but we cannot truly affect change at a root cause level until we look at this larger system. Infinite growth is an impossible model on a finite resource world such as ours. The sharing economy challenges the growth-based economy. Instead of growth of individual consumption and industry, the community shares consumption and shares resources and services, thereby reducing the demand of goods and services and lowering our overall impact. So groups like the New Economics Institute is a youth-based group that's looking at and documenting um, this sharing economy, or how they call it the solidarity economy. And also Shareable is an incredible blog that is documenting the projects happening all around the world. So this includes more than tools, they say, it includes bike sharing, car sharing, Airbnb, couch surfing, you know, community gardens, and even renewable energy co-ops. More people are putting past the divisionary politics of the past and starting to connect the dots with the groups, struggles, and people around the world, finding common ground to build a greater movement. One group that is doing this in very practical terms is 350.org. Now, for somebody that may not know 350, 350 is a global online climate movement spearheading the fight for climate change in real world terms as well. They're, they're building collaboration with diverse groups, finding commonality actually with labor unions, farmers and indigenous peoples, artists, musicians and celebrities, sports teams, students and teachers, as well as faith-based groups, almost any and all sectors of society. They draw this unity by finding this common ground, this common goal, a target for them of reducing emissions. And there's many other ways in which people can affect change. It's not just using drones or doing labeling campaigns, but it's, as I say, using our diverse talents and abilities, even our own careers. So there's individuals using architecture to build sustainable cities and buildings. Others in, uh, very passionate about science are also using it to create solutions for renewable energy, such as uh, biogas and this anaerobic digester. Our world is not hopeless. Our future is not hopeless. And we are not hopeless. If we choose to be our own change makers now, we can rewrite the story of our times to being one where we reclaimed our world. Thank you.